Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. And come and join us on our Facebook page page. We have a Facebook group and just look for a daily Bible podcast. We would love to have you part of our community. Yes, we most definitely would. And share it with a friend. Share it with a friend. Tell a friend about the podcast if you haven't already and ask them to join us not only in listening to the podcast, but ask them to join us um, in, in the community on Facebook. Okay, so today we are reading Hebrews 11 and Hebrews 12. And before we look at today's passage, let's go back to uh, the last verse that we read yesterday. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but those who have faith and persevere and, and but those who have faith and preserve their souls. You, too, have faith, my friends. Mm-hmm. Faith consists of persistent hope in the promises of God, and it is such faith that obtains salvation on the last day. And faith is the insur and faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not Mm -hmm. seen. Like faith is so easy and so simple, and yet faith is so hard. Like faith is that one of those words that just it's there's just so much to it. It's hard to unpack. Okay. So today we t- take a ride down memory lane, or we, or you could say we walk through the hall of fame of faith and, oh, the richness. It wasn't just remembering certain people, but knowing what they did to receive recognition or as the ESV translates commendation, the new American standard Bible translates and says that this faith is how they gained their approval. The people named in this chapter, they clung Mm -hmm. to God. So they received their recognition or their, their recognition or their commendation or their approval. They clung to God. Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God. Enoch was taken up to heaven as he was known as a person who pleased to God. Noah received righteousness because of his faith. Abraham obeyed God, following him to a land unknown, looking for a city that has foundations designed by God. Sarah gave birth to a son. And why is she named here? Because she believed God would keep his promises. I I actually, I, I'm going to pause for a second. I love that about Sarah because I think that she gets such a bad rap because mm-hmm. she laughed. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, well, she just doubted God. But yet she's named in the hall of faith. Mm-hmm. Like she knew God would keep his promises. I remember, was it last week we talked about not just believing in God or believing about God, but believing God. Mm-hmm. And and that's what Sarah did. She believed God. And and there's so many things in that story that just continually blow my mind. But she's named in the Hall of Faith yeah. because she believed God. And then on to Isaac and Jacob. We hear of the faith of Moses. Moses, after leaving Egypt, kept his eyes on the one who was vis- invisible. And then we read of Israel, of Jericho, of Rahab. And I'm just going to read the the rest of the chapter here. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though commended for their faith, did not receive Mm -hmm. what was promised, since God 
had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Remember, they were of the old covenant. God was providing a new covenant, a better covenant, a promise that that he kept. That because God has provided something better for us and they didn't get to see it. Like they were hoping for the Messiah. They just wanted it. And we got get to see it. We get to see the whole picture. We have yeah. the Bible and we get to experience it all, which we, I mean, yeah, they, I mean, now they're in heaven, they get to see the whole thing, but, but in their lifetime, they did not get to see it. Um, and they, pers- they, they persevered. Mm-hmm. And, and I think of how hard it is to persevere here. And we have, we have the word of God. We see that God kept all of his promises from the entire Old Testament. Every time he said one day, one day, mm-hmm. like he kept them. We know that. We know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. If they had faith. They did not have the word to lean on, but they had faith and they knew. And I just, I'm just so blown away at their perseverance. Yeah. We also have the Holy Spirit living within us. True. They had, in moments, the Spirit came down, but we have the Holy Spirit in us. I mean, it's just so much. Okay. (sighs) Chapter 12, uh, the chapter encourages believers to persevere in their faith, likening their spiritual journey to a race. It emphasizes that they should focus on Jesus, the author and perfecter of their faith, who endured the cross for the joy set before him, but Mm. encouraged to consider Jesus's endurance in the face of suffering so that they may not grow weary or lose heart. So whenever we are overwhelmed, just consider what Jesus endured. Um, Hebrews 12 discusses the concept of God's discipline. Mm. Like this isn't a fun part of the chapter, but Mm. the important part, because it reminds us what this whole thing is about. So the concept of God's discipline, comparing it to a loving father, correcting his children. It teaches that God disciplines his children for their good to produce righteousness and holiness in their lives. This chapter encourages believers to embrace God's discipline and see it as a sign of his love and fatherly care. Sometimes we're like, God, why is this happening to us? It's like, because he wants to show us that he cares for us. There's things in our life sometimes that we self, selfish, selfishness, um, pride. I could think of things in my life. He definitely needed to root out. The chapter also warns against falling into bitterness or the root of bitterness, which can hinder one's spiritual growth. Instead, believers are urged to pursue peace and holiness, mm. ensuring no one falls short of God's grace. And Hebrews 12 concludes with a reminder that the recipients of this letter have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, and we are we, including all of us, are part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We are called to offer worship to God with reverence and awe as he is a consuming fire. Mm-hmm. And it encourages believers to persevere in their faith, endure trials as discipline from a loving God. And I'm just going to repeat that. Endure trials as discipline from a loving God and pursue peace and holiness. It emphasizes the importance of fixing one's eyes on Jesus and serving God with reverence, recognizing the unshakable kingdom to which they belong. And, you know, we just got finished with Paul. He was saying, you know, for all these things, for all the loss, it's gain because I have Christ. I know him. I know the power of his resurrection. We know him better. And like, man, Paul faced some tough stuff, but he with each thing, he knew God better. He leaned into God more. He's able to share his faith more. And like the hard stuff we go through, there's been hard stuff. And I'm like, I did not want to go through it at the time. Mm-hmm. Now I see that I'm able to endure and persevere. I have a closer relationship with God. I understand more. I, ha- I have faith more. I'm able to share my story with other others and give them hope. I'm thankful. It wasn't fun during the time, but I am thankful. And it just, this reminds me of what we just, all the things we read of Paul, that endurance, the continuing the race, the fixing your eyes ahead, because we just saw that whole example through Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we need to take a break. And when we come back, we'll have the word of the day. Stay tuned.
So the word of the day is endurance. The fact or power of enduring an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way. So like Michelle mentioned, Hebrews 11 is the hall of faith. And I don't need to repeat any of this because she just went over it so well. But those people had to endure. They had to press on through trials, even when the odds were stacked against them. And then our story merges with these heroes. So in Hebrews 12, 1 through 2, we're urged, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let's run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So just as they did, we are called to endure and persevere in this race. The anchor of our endurance is fixed squarely on Jesus. When life's obstacles or temptations or trials threaten to ensnare us, we must remember that Jesus endured the cross for the joy set Mm -hmm. before him. The moment was not joyful, but for the joy of having us with him, giving us access to God, letting us be with him for eternity. That's the joy set before him. He's not only our example of endurance, but he's the source, source of our endurance of our unwavering endurance. So endurance in the faith race means shedding the the hindrances and sins that ensnare us. So how do we do this? So first of all, fix your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes steadfastly on Christ in every circumstance and challenge. He is the author and perfecter of your faith and then lay aside every weight. So identify and cast off anything that hinders your spiritual growth and intimacy with God. And this may include sin, distractions, or unfruitful habits. And a prayer I turn to is Psalm 139, 23 through 24. So this is from the Amplified Translation here. It says, search me thoroughly, O God, and know my heart. Test me. Like, why would we pray this? Mm. (laughs) But we are. Test me. I know my anxious thoughts and see if there's any wicked or hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. So test me and know my anxious thoughts. This ties perfectly to what we read today in Hebrews about how earthly fathers discipline for a few years, but God's discipline is good for us. Mm-hmm. And it says, but afterward, they will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. So when we say search me and test me, it says lead me to the everlasting way in Psalms. And then in Hebrews, it's saying afterwards, there's that perfect, that peaceful harvest of right living. So the psalmist invites God to test and examine our hearts and thoughts, seeking purification and guidance. And it's not easy to be examined. <laughs> The author of Hebrews acknowledges the discomfort and pain associated with God's examination and discipline, but we also learn the ultimate purpose, a harvest of right living and holiness in the lives of those who submit to his examination. It's hard. It's hard. But if we're living godly lives, we don't have to keep repeating the same mistakes over and over. So that hard for a moment helps us have peace in a lifetime. So what do we do? Persist in the race. When the future trials come, we aren't as hindered. We're not so burdened down with those sins and those things that are holding us back. We know how to rely on faith and we can remain rest assured that God's promises are unshakable. And then when we get discouraged, we can draw inspiration from these faith heroes. Mm -hmm. We can delve into the stories that we've been reading about through the year. We can meditate upon them. We could let them inspire our faith journey. And then finally, we can encourage fellow runners. Just as surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, we are called to be witnesses to other, encourage our brothers and our sisters in Christ as they journey towards the finish line because faith is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Endurance is the golden thread that carries us through, or maybe the golden sneakers, probably the golden (laughs) sneakers that carry us through. Um, So let us run with perseverance, mirroring the faith of those who have gone before us and let our wellspring of strength and hope be found in Jesus Christ, who empowers us to endure and triumphantly, triumphantly cross the finish line. That is, oh, that just, it gives me chills to think that Christ empowers us to walk through life And to do it so well that we can triumphantly cross that finish line. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and, and just as I'm thinking about running that race, we've got this cloud of witnesses. And all I can think about is we have these witnesses who are in the stands watching us run and cheering for us. Come on. Um, you can do it, Michelle. I know. I know. You can oh, do it. On. And then at the end, yay. Or if we're ahead, yeah. And and you know they want everybody to be ahead because it's yeah. just kind of like it's it's like yeah. we're all in this together. Yeah. And um and and but just them going, yeah, like we're here. We're here. We're cheering you on. Like to think Paul could be cheering me on. He probably isn't. I don't know. No, he that. is. That, it says that, it says we are surrounded by a great cloud well, of witnesses. Okay. We are. Paul is I mean, cheering to, us on. To think <laughs> Paul could be cheering us on or Sarah could be cheering us on. I mean, just that that is so that is so cool. But to know that Jesus, the better is the one who is perfecting our faith in, in that race. And, um, and just as, as you reminded us that we need to fix our eyes on Jesus, we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. I was thinking about a horse race. And um, if, if you've ever been to a horse race or know anything about or watched a horse race on TV, like the Kentucky Derby or something, you know that one of the things that is the equipment on the horse as they're running, as they're getting ready to run, is they put blinders on that horse. And it's to keep that horse's head going forward mm -hmm. because a horse is so apt to look to the side and probably bite someone or look to the other side. But, but you want to keep that horse head going forward. And so like, I almost think of, of the race that we need to be on. We need to have those blinders on mm -hmm. not so that, well, number one, we're not comparing ourselves to anyone else. And number two, we're not falling for the sin that is happening around us. Like we keep, we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus so that we do not fall down in the ditch in any way. And so that we just keep going. We, we keep going no matter what. And because he is the author, perfecter of our faith, he does get us through. He gives us the endurance to keep going. And, um, and so, uh, we are on a race, Trish. Yeah. We're on a race. It reminds me when I took skiing lessons, I am like the worst skier ever. It scares me a lot, but we were like on the bunny slopes and those guys like don't look at the trees if you look at the trees you're going to go towards the trees and you're going to crash look down the hill keep looking straight don't look at all the stuff on the side yes we know there's people cheering us on but keep our eyes fixed on jesus and we will triumphantly cross the line there's so many distractions in this world today let's just keep keep our eyes fixed on jesus so michelle would you pray for us would you pray for this endurance as we continue on? I will do that. Oh, Father God, we just come before you today, humbled and in awe that you are our God, mm -hmm. humbled and in awe that you chose us, humbled and in awe that, that um, Jesus is our author and perfecter of our faith, that we get to run this race and that we get to run this race knowing that you are waiting at the finish line that you are cheering us on, that we have a cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on and, um, and that we receive this endurance from you to continue each day, each step of the way, even when we, we hit hard times, even, even when we stumble, even, even when the race is hard, Lord, we know that you give us the endurance. And so father, I just pray for, um, any number of my friends today who who need that little extra push, that they need that endurance to keep going. And I pray, Father, that you just cheer them on, that you whisper to their spirit, that you bring a, a verse to mind mm -hmm. that just presses them further into you and encourages them to just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. Lord, we love you. And we cannot wait until we cross that finish line and see you face to face. Lord, you are amazing. And we come and we just stand in awe of you. And thank you for all that you have done on our behalf. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the Word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is the monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. Okay, so tomorrow we are reading Hebrews 13, closing the book on Hebrews, and we're opening up 1 Peter 1. I love 1 Peter. I know, so good. (laughs) I said that about Hebrews. (laughs) I I said that about so many other books. I love 1 Peter. Anyway, so so tomorrow we start 1 Peter 1 and 1 Peter 2. Two, but we'll just be reading the first three verses of First Peter 2. I want to thank the team, the fantastic team at Life Audio. You know, you wouldn't be listening to Daily Bible Podcast without their help, their guidance, and their belief in Trisha and myself. LifeAudio.com has developed an excellent platform with you in mind, a podcast platform that is, and they have many Christian podcasts waiting for your kids, for you, for your husband, for just whoever is wanting to grow in their understanding of God. That's lifeaudio.com. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.